Good morning, Temple Baptist Church. I hope you're all doing well today. <clears throat> Let's just pray that this virus we're, that we have will be under control soon. Uh, I'm just about tired of not being able to fellowship with our Christian brothers and sisters. And along with that, as we pray today, whoever, whatever you're praying for, let's remember to pray for our government, our president, our pastors, and our members. We have a lot of things to pray for and thank God for today. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a minute. Father, we're thankful for this day and for all you do for us each day and we provide our every need. Lord, you're so good to us. You love us. You care for us and you help us. We do pray, Lord, for the ones who have the virus and other ailments, for those who have gone through surgery and everything that's going on in, in their lives, Lord, that's not according to what they would like for it to be. We ask you to be with uh, Brother Johnny Searcy as he's still in the hospital in Chattanooga. Pray that you'd help him to get over his virus. And any others that we know of, Lord, we pray for Victor. Clark and his surgery, pray you continue to be with him. And we again thank you for being with us in each day and helping us. And for all that you do for us. And help us always to remember, Lord, that everything that we have comes from you. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're going to talk about committed to his worship. And we'll be in Psalms 99, verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> when have you been swept up in a moment of excitement? Maybe something new, new car, new hair dryer, anything new uh, that excited you. Maybe some good news of a loved one who has recuperated from an illness or something. Along those lines, we can think that there are many reasons to love the fall season. The leaves change color. The weather gets cooler, the football season arrives, boys of all ages put <clears throat> on pads and helmets so that they can play a game that borders on violence. Fans pack the stadium to cheer their team on. Have you checked ticket prices lately? You can almost buy a car. And a lot of times you can buy a car for a ticket to a football game or a basketball game in the pros. It's ridiculous what people would do in different situations, especially when it comes to uh, games. Do you know where the word fan comes from? I never had thought about it until recently. It comes from the word fanatic. And I can certainly see where they would get the, that word from. Fans raise their arms and jump to their feet screaming. The team scores, both fans and players raise their arms as a sign of victory and adoration. If you'll notice that the star players who do the touchdowns or make the basket. Give no credit to God, but beat their chest in self-adoration. Can you think of anyone who deserves our adoration and praise more than God? Without Him, we are nothing. No, no one deserves our praise more than God. And yet most of us sit with our arms folded when we hear God's Word preached. You know, if we treated our pastor and uh, those who are preaching God's Word 
with the same adoration and enthusiasm that we do to ball players, there'd probably be a lot more <clears throat> people reached for, for the Lord. All good gifts come from God. Therefore, we should praise Him. The first uh, three verses of Psalm 99 is what we'll look at right now. It said, The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. This verse in verse 1 helps us to see how much he matters to us. When we come before him we tremble. Not because we're terrorized but because our sincere, sincere love gives way to complete reverence. Think about when you're uh, worshiping, think about who God is. It, uh, it boggles the mind, as I've heard some people say, to realize who God is. God alone reigns. No one else reigns. He is in control of the universe. He sits on his throne, surrounded by cherubims, his guardian angels. The earth quakes in worship of him. <clears throat> when you think of the universe, how big it is, I recall back years ago, in the 70s, they, uh, the scientists sent out a satellite to see if they could find out how big the universe was. And last time I heard, it is still going. So the universe is very big, a lot more than we can even imagine in our small minds. Verse 2, that the Lord is great in Zion and he, he is exalted above all the people. God's people often referred to Jerusalem as Zion. The Israelites came to think that they were exclusively God's people. And they were for a time. But like everything else that we do, we sin. Either they were Jewish or they were Gentiles. There wasn't any in between. The psalmist countered this by saying God would be high above all people everywhere not just Israel. God looks over all the people, all over the world. Every nation needs to worship Him, the living God. In verse 3, it says, Let them praise your great and awesome name. He, holy is He. The psalmist said, Let all the people praise Him. In order to worship Him, they had to surrender their lives to Him. As his children, we should be inspired to worship him just at the mention of his name. His nature and his ways have distinguished him from everyone and everything else. He is worthy of our praise. How have you seen God's power in your life that caused you to worship him? Think about at times you prayed and God answered and you said that had to be God nothing else could have, could have brought that about Psalm 99 4 and verse 4 and 5 says the king in his might loves justice you have established equity you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. God is a God of justice. How have you seen our justice system fail? In recent years, 
it has been proven that a lot of men were sent to prison for life for a crime they did not commit. And until technology come along to prove it differently, they were spending their life in prison. And this is a system that failed. God's system of justice is woven in our way of life as his people. You recall recently in the, all of, during the summer, the riots, the burning, the killing, those are people without Christ. I believe that those doing these things don't know the Lord. God expects his people to treat others the same way he would treat them. What should be our response to our justice-loving, justice-executing God? That's answered in verse 5. Exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. How would you explain your willingness to praise God even in the face of injustices? And I'm sure at some time all of us have been faced with some injustices. How could you praise Him even during these times? I believe we have to trust Him to work things out. How Have you ever been treated unfairly and how did you react? Usually the first thing I thought of is revenge. After I got saved and got in the, the Word and the Lord, I found that if I put my trust in God, He will work things out. When we exalt God, we lift Him up, extol Him, honor Him in our praise to Him. You know, back in the ancient days of the kings, Israeli kings, uh, who sat on the throne, they would place their feet on stools with the likeness of those they conquered engraved on the stools. This signified their dominance over the conquered nation. This came to be identified as God's sovereignty over the earth. That leads us to worship Him. In <clears throat> Psalm 90, 9, verse 6 through 9 says, Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statutes that he gave them. Our O Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. The three men mentioned in this verse 6 there uh, provides tr proof that God answers prayers when we pray. And I've heard you, um, I've heard men, uh, our pastor one of them say that when you pray to God, He answers either yes, no, or wait. Moses, Aaron, and Samuel called on the name of their God, their Lord, in their time of distress. You recall uh, when the Israelites complained on their journeys that there was no water. Moses went to the Lord in prayer. God miraculously provided water out of a rock. While you're thinking about that, you recall what Moses did and what his punishment was. Instead of <clears throat> just tapping the rock like he's supposed to, he told the rock, told it to give water. Moses sinned against God and it cost him the promised land. You recall that God told him, because of your sinning against me, you will not be able to go into the promised land. I'm going to let you go up on the mountain and look over at the promised land 
but that's as far as you're going. In another case, God was about to wipe out the Israelites until Moses interceded in prayer. God pardoned the people, but the thing about it, those people who were there, who were 20 years old or older, would die in the wilderness. They would not enter the promised land. Uh, <coughs> verse 7 says, In the pillar of, of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave them. God gave the Israelites a cloud to guide them on the way to the promised land. He promised them. He provided them with his testimonies and ordinances he expected them to honor. These form the written law he gave to Moses. Verse 8 says, O Lord our God, you answer them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. We're drawn to express our gratitude to him for his forgiveness. How many times a day do you ask forgiveness? I know we have to do it uh, quite often, uh, no matter who you are. You have to ask forgiveness for God for wrongdoing. His word drives home the ugly fact that we are sinners who deserve to be punished. God took the initiative to, to, to tear down the wall that separates us from God. Because He is a God that forgave, He pardoned us through Christ. And in verse 9 it says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. When God's people worshipped Him on Mount Zion, they indicated that they would worship the Lord, for He is holy. That runs through the, all the scripture uh, in the Old Testament and Psalms, that God is holy. We should rejoice because we belong to Him through faith in Christ. Christ died for our sins. Our joy prompts us to worship and praise God in this season of thanksgiving. Do you ever... Well, let me make a suggestion. This goes for me too. Sit down and make a list of all the blessings and good things that come from God. The scripture says all good things come from God. Are any of those things objects of worship? You know, we have people worshiping everything under the sun, I guess you could say, from all over the world. As you've heard, I'm sure, many times, a lot of people worship the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees. Anything that can be worshipped, people will pick them out and worship it. Ask God to lead you to make Him first in your worship. If you put God first, He'll take care of you. Remember who He, he is, who God is, and worship Him. For he is holy. I guess during this being Thanksgiving season we often forget who provides all the good stuff. And I heard several people say already this year, uh, just before Thanksgiving, that because of the virus they're not going to be meeting as a family. That is such a, a downer to me. That we can't meet as a family and give our thanks to the Lord for all He does for us every day. Not just Thanksgiving, but every day. And I hope and pray that uh, the Lord will see fit to let a vaccine be found. Some of them already have been found. 
that can take care of the virus and we can get back to worshiping together in your house, Lord, and that uh, you'll provide for us and keep us safe. Now let's pray to that end. Father, we just thank you again today for this message that you've given to us and for the scripture that has been read and told us, Lord, how to live, what to do. We praise you, Lord, if, as we read our scripture each day, we always find something in it that will help us to live a better life and a life that will be honorable to you. We ask, Lord, your forgiveness when we fail you. Lord, we ask you to be with our church, make it to grow, Help the Lord that uh, we'll be uh, obedient to what your word teaches us. And that we'll come to your house, Lord. And uh, I understand that some people don't want to get the virus, which nobody does. But Lord, I know that you're going to take care of us. You're going to watch over us and help us each day. And uh, help us to just remember that all adoration, Lord, goes to you. For all that you've done for us in the past, what you're doing now, and what you're going to do in the future. Forgive us, Lord, our many sins and shortcomings, and help us to be a better witness for you. And I'll thank and praise you for all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.